This is Together on the Move. And now, our host. Ah! <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're looking good, audience. You're looking so good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Together on the Move. And like we said in other shows, we are going to dedicate a lot of these episodes to discussing the Constitution especially in view of the fact that we'll be going into an election very soon, maybe this year, maybe next year, once all these uh, politics have been sorted out. And today's topic of discussion, ladies and gentlemen, is demystifying devolution. In the early 90s. 91, 90, 90 there. Exactly. Yes. And we only got the constitution after, what, maybe 10, years. 12, uh, yeah, 20, 20 22 years. years. So now we have a new constitution. It will take time to implement, but... The reason was, one, the all-powerful president and the ability of this all-powerful president to favor ministers, those ministers to favor parts of the country, so that Kenya became not only classes, but some regions are growing, others are not. Um, and development was not being done based on um, proper development principles, yeah. but on politics. Yeah. So the first reason we wanted a new constitution was to check this excessive power of the presidency. And the way that was done, of course, is creating a strong judiciary, strong uh, police, mm -hmm. strong parliament, mm -hmm. and an accountable presidency. Mm -hmm. The other thing um, that has been done in the constitution, of course, has been to strengthen citizen voice, to change the relationship, or yeah. rather to clearly um, strengthen the relationship between the state and the citizen. Awesome. So that now we have rights that are enshrined in the constitution. We have a right to development. Yes. We have a right to services. Uh, the government has an obligation to report to us. Public yes. officers have duties to report to us. Yes. So that relationship has been flipped around yeah. and our constitution has given us a lot power. of say yeah. as citizens. So yes. the power has come to the people. Mm -hmm. Accountable power. Okay. And um, that is one of the things that needs to now, I think that's a change we need to embrace. And in a devolved system, government um, shares that power with lower level governments. And lower doesn't mean in terms of hierarchy, it yeah. just means closer to the people. Mm -hmm. So our constitution has created 47 devolved governments. These governments are distinct from national government, um, but, and they are to cooperate and coordinate with the national government. The relationship is not one of a big brother national, and little mm, governments. Mm, mm. Actually, we have 48 governments, and they are supposed to work, uh, get a, a cooperative, oh. yes, in tandem, get a cooperative relationship. Mm -hmm. The constitution gives certain roles to the national government, certain roles to the county government, and they have to work out a way to share this. So the constitution has given power to county governments, power to raise taxes, mm -hmm. power to uh, develop budgets and mm -hmm. determine mm -hmm. how our taxation will be used. Constitution provides that a minimum of 15% of our revenue mm. uh, will, be, will be directly allocated mm. to, uh, or determined by these county governments. That's a minimum. That figure could go up to 30, 40, 50. And it will go up because county governments have been given the job of delivering Generate. services. Oh, to, deli to, to okay. deliver services. To deliver services. National government has mainly been given a lot of policy, okay. development of yes. standards, yes. because we are one country. Yeah. But we're now one okay. country Within with, with 47 governments. Exactly. And those 47 governments are equal in stature, but they have different functions. Mm -hmm. The resistance, mm -hmm. the resistance comes mm -hmm. from those who are used to unilaterally deciding what goes down to the local level, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. That is no longer negotiable. Yes. 
the power has been taken away. So okay. of course there's... there's so they are, they're so they are, they are fighting a losing battle. There are beneficiaries mm -hmm. of the centralized system. Uh -huh. And because of the structures that have been put in place, the principles, the values, we are now moving towards open governance, more transparent, devolution of power, strengthening of citizens where you have a right to ask for information yes. on how your county government is managing Spending your taxes. Your money. So the power is being moved to the yes. people. Yes. So of course you'll have resistance yeah. because there are those who benefit from our ignorance and our fear to engage Absolutely. Government. I see that the biggest threat that we may be able to, yes. that we need to work out in yes. terms of devolution will be the the ghost of misinformation. Okay. Misinformation, and the second one is yeah. that people not wanting to participate, as uh, Wanjiku is saying, because the constitution is is clear as how uh, citizens are are allowed mm -hmm. to engage with mm -hmm. these processes. Mm -hmm. But if they don't participate, mm -hmm. then that means in that gap will be able to not be filled, and people will continue. Uh, if if corruption is there, it yeah. will continue existing. Yeah. yeah. And also, misinformation is likely to make this whole uh, concept yeah. of devolution yeah. go to down yeah. the drain. I must confess that uh, we are still in the competition stage of oh, where yeah. we left off in uh, 2007. We are still, oh, uh, Likua, no, yeah. meaning Likua, yes. We have not realized that this country is oh, ours, my. that we need to be able to have discussions in, oh, we don't have to be right, we don't have to be wrong. Yeah. The right way is yeah. that we need to be able to see what is yeah. best for our, yeah. for our nation and yeah. what is best for the county governments. Yeah. There still needs to be a lot of reconciliations in that aspect that has not happened. Yeah. There is need of pulling in uh, the, the, the pulling constituency in the, of the church, yeah. which, was a, which was a major factor during the 2007 yes. Yes. Uh, election yeah. and also during the campaigns for the, yeah. for the constitution in yeah. 2010. The bill to watch out for is the Leadership and Integrity Bill. It tries to actually act actualize the principles that have been put in Chapter 6, which also sets the parameters in which we can be able to have some of these leaders um, interrogated or vetted before they actually vie for office. But a lot of it will, will need people to come up forward if they have any information that these particular aspirants are, are not uh, meeting the integrity test or the leadership test so that we can be able to bar them at that level of of nomination or at the process of uh, being shortlisted so that they don't go that far. But the, unfortunately, the, the, the bar in which such people can be able to be prevented to, to vie for their seats is quite high. Mm. You'll need to, to prove a lot of um, uh, the allegations that have been put for, and that might be a challenge that uh, we might not, that is very steep actually mm. to be able to achieve. When you look at uh, our, our experience as a, a, as a nation, mm -hmm. as, a, as a country, as a mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. um, going back to our history, mm -hmm. uh, so Kenyans have, have, have uh, all reasons uh, to be afraid and to fear mm -hmm. that the experience that we've had so far, and especially on issues of governance, mm -hmm. if we do not address them uh, properly, mm -hmm. then we'll just be devolving those very things that we're trying to, to run away from. But the beautiful thing about it is that um, in looking through uh, the provisions of the Constitution, yes. and uh, especially as attaining to devolution, mm -hmm. certain provisions, uh, certain chapters mm -hmm. uh, were put in place to mitigate okay. and address uh, these very fears that okay. we, we do have. And beyond the provisions in the Constitution, yes. we also have now uh, legislation that uh, we are working on. Yes. Uh, and uh, some legislation is already out there. Mm -hmm. Some we are still uh, looking into, into mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And it is in those pieces of legislation mm -hmm. that we might and we should be able to take care of those fears okay. that uh, we want to address yeah. as, as a nation. Okay. So I would say that the fear should be good in terms of keeping us, keeping us vigilant yes. and keeping us alive to the fact that if we yeah. do not address those Things issues, will go then this will go bad. Yeah. And that fear, uh, again, is what we should direct towards okay. the pieces of legislation oh. that we want to use to breathe life and animate Into the Constitution. Into sections of yes. the Constitution. Mm. And when we talk of the Constitution, we also own it and remember, remind ourselves that this is the document that we have given unto ourselves mm -hmm. and to the future generations mm -hmm. of this country. Mm -hmm. And the first, very first article of the Constitution uh, does change the mind frame of mm -hmm. how we organize ourselves in terms of uh, depositing sovereignty 
which we better understand maybe when we put it in Kiswahili, Mamlaka, in ourselves as a collective nation of Kenya. So we are the, guide, uh, we are the owners, the gu guardians, yes. the stewards of this country. Mm -hmm. And that's why we must always remain vigilant. We, we must always remember that in protecting this constitution and even in aspects of devolution, yes. we as Wanainchi come first. And that's why ah. we did place that as the first article of the constitution that we yeah. bear the sovereignty of this nation mm -hmm. as expressed in the constitution. But beyond that, mm -hmm. uh, for the first time, we have a framework of national values and uh, principles, uh, principles of governance, mm -hmm. um, issues to do with human rights, mm -hmm. tolerance, mm -hmm. uh, 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 doing away with corruption, those are expressly put mm -hmm. under Article 10 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We have now a very comprehensive uh, Bill of Rights that protects, uh, amongst others, uh, so even social and economic rights mm -hmm. for the first time in, in our country. Mm -hmm. But within uh, Chapter 4, that is a Bill of Rights, we have those protective rights which ensure that we as 190 mm -hmm. are protected, and, uh, 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 if I may say, against the, 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 the extension of the state's powers, but yeah. also to ensure that uh, our human security, our livelihoods are put to the place where they must be. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, and uh, my colleagues have talked about this, we have uh, chapter six, uh, integrity and ethics, mm -hmm. which will check uh, leadership and ensure that we infuse integrity in leadership uh, ensure that we take uh, care mm. and uh, nip uh, 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 corruption right bird. in the bud. So we want to ensure that the leadership, both at the, the, at the national level, yes. but also at the devolved uh, government level, yes. is leadership that will not be as business as usual, as, as usual. has been. Uh, when you look yeah. at you know, other yeah. chapters, there are many public finance, the control mechanisms around how money uh, or resources are shared out, how these are consumed or exploited, mm. both at the national level and at uh, your devolved uh, government. Mm. So we have proper checks and balances that if so, we do mm. exploit to the letter and spirit, It'll then work. we'll mitigate wow. uh, uh, the issues that uh, we will take care of. Fantastic. As for now, we are taking this show home. See you again next time. Together on the moon. Together on the moon We're coming from a nation Together we stand We're heading one direction We reach for the sun We got so much possession on the moon.